Because I did a full swing. Uh, nope. Um, nothing to do with that. Um, my timing. Perfect. All right. I saw you starting to do this. What did you go nice and slow? Yep. Did you freak out anywhere? All right. Did you start striding before or after I threw it? Eh. What do you mean? Hey, you got to know this answer. Before. You, you, didn't, you didn't wait till I threw it. All right. That's why you're on time. Because if you wait, what are you going to do? Yep. You lunge at it. So if you answer this question correctly, yep. you're gonna win a pack of cards. Are you ready for that? A pack of cards? A pack of cards. Can I help him? In SpongeBob SquarePants. Good, buddy. Who? I know. Good. Tries to always steal the secret formula. Collected. There you go. Okay. Tiger open, the, open the lid. <laughs> Is that too easy? Yes! Show the camera, dude. Show the camera. There you go. Perfect. And Will Clark, um, um, Robin Young's, um, Gary Peach. Oh, old players in the 80s. Um, Frank Milo. Show the hero. Let's go, get me the brother. Oh, I got it. Great moments in baseball. That was all surprising. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> now I gotta do a dance. Let me see it. Your best dance. Let me see it. Come on. Let me see it. Oh. <laughs> Pretty much what I'm testing for is I get the pelvis rotation. Mm -hmm. all, all rotational sport athletes. Predominantly softball, you get, you'll get you see it a little less in softball because mm -hmm. you're not really throwing overhead as much yeah. uh, compared to pitchers. But essentially what ends up happening, the more you throw right, the pelvis kind of tips up forward. It's more. Especially even with especially with you you hitting third, right? You gotta try and hit bombs, right? So you really push it off that back foot. Yeah. Every single time you push, it actually jams and then kinda like rotates the pelvis, which is normal, right? Mm -hmm. But what ends up happening is as you stand statically, mm -hmm. it kinda rotates up. Yeah. Right? That's not bad. The only thing I'm more concerned about is if it's too much. Okay. Right? So it's a little bit, but that could be a lot from you haven't been really, I'm assuming you haven't lived, been lifting for like what? No, since like the winter. A lot of the times, you know, we're really trying to focus on and making sure that our hip internal and external rotation is kind of normal. Um, generally, you'll see like, especially like rotational athletes, one side usually is more mobile than the other. So from a strength and conditioning perspective, we need to kind of just make sure that whatever she's doing, she can hold a good position, um, even with mobility. Um, we don't want to make sure we don't, we don't really like to see any type of any lax or hypermobile joints, or we don't really want to see any type of areas that are, I guess, kind of just more mobile than the others. Again, it, it usually with mobility and stability, we like to find that balance between the two. And that usually just comes from understanding strength balances. And you can kind of see with Maddie right here, her flex is kind of tight. That's why you were working a little bit on that before, because she don't stretch. It's all good. We'll work on that. Both legs kind of pop up. Yeah. So that to me is like a, what we're looking at as an anti-rotation stability. You're so focused on rotating really fast mm -hmm. that you don't have the ability to stop it. <laughs> yeah. right? So what ends up happening is you'll either sometimes kind of fall out when you're swinging, uh -huh. and you fall through, or and you're kind of just late to yeah. kind of run out yeah. because you're so busy trying to go this way, you got to go that way. <laughs> Ready. First hockey guy, but we've been working hard for about three months right now. Watch these, watch these shots. Little, watch this three ball combo right here. Watch the little rotator cuff. If I don't blow it out with baseball, I'm gonna blow it out with a tennis racket. Nice, last one. <laughs> Got you! Got you! Nice! I'll do this too. Right over his glove shoulder. Right over his glove. 126 miles an hour.
Butch Duke's done. So as soon as it's three outs, boom, we're going out. Some of us are taking forever to get out there. You got to get out there as soon as it's three outs, you take your helmet off, and boom, you get your glove and you're out. All right, so we got to make sure we're working on that fast, because like we said last time, the first baseman warms up the infield. So if the first baseman's the last one to go out there, well, that means that the infield got zero ground balls. So we have to make sure we're working hard on that. Catchers, we're going to work on this in practice today. So the three catchers are going to go back there. We're going to work on picking the guy off third base. Because sometimes those guys are too far off, and we don't have a sign for that, but we're going to. So I'm going to say, I'm going to say, hang in there, Joey. Hang in there, Joey. And then I'm also going to say the same thing to whoever's on third base. Hang in there, Jack. Hang in there, Tyler. Hang in there, Logan. DeWack or JB. Whoever's over there will say, hang in there. Okay, well, I'm going to say it to both guys. So if I say, hang in there, Joey and JB, that's the combination of the third baseman and the catcher comboing. I'm going to get a ball, and I'm going to shuffle to my partner. And I'm going to roll it back to him. He's going to catch it and shuffle at me. Then I'm going to field it and shuffle to him. Good, Jake. Get to that base. Go. As soon as he touches the base. Slide a little bit earlier. Yup. Good. Keep those hands up. There you go. There you go. I want you guys to catch. And you're coming up right into your throw. You, by the time you go like this, Coach Steve is going to be yelling back before you even make a move. You guys got to catch and gun. Go. Go. Ah! Perfect. Whoa.